Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for each person here today. I thank you, Lord, that you are the one who gives us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, that the eyes of our understanding are being enlightened, that we know what is the hope of your calling in our lives, what are the riches of your glory, of your inheritance in us. Lord, what we have in Christ Jesus, who we are in Christ Jesus, what we can do through Christ Jesus. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, what, give us a revelation of the power, that resurrection power that works in our lives. Lord, we thank you for that. Help us, Lord, to be what you've called us to be, to do what you've called us to do. Lord, we will walk in the victory that you've already planned for us. And we give you the praise, all the honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, we are dealing with uh, you know, spiritual enemies and a spiritual battle going on. It's an invisible battle, but it's... It's there. there. There's a real devil out there. There are real demons out there. There's a real plan out there. The devil has a plan for your life. But God also has a plan for your life. Amen? Amen. Isn't that good? Yes. But, but we live in days, you know, the Bible calls it in the evil day. The, the enemy is coming in and trying to bring destruction on Christians and on really against Christ. And so there's a battle that takes place. We've been talking about praise and worship in here. And we know that uh, as we praise and worship God, we become more like Him, more godly. Because He rubs off on us. And so we're going to be, we, we talked about that a little bit last week. And we're going to be talking about another aspect of praise. We're going to be talking about the, the high praises of God. The high praises of God. So if there's high praises of God, then that also would tell you that maybe there are Low praises of God. I believe high praises of God, it's, it's, yeah, it can be loud, but I think it's more so passion. You know, your, pa your heart, your passion that's going out. You can have a passion for God and not necessarily be screaming at the top of your lungs. Amen? You can be screaming at the top of your lungs and not really have a passion for God. People do that all the time. At football games. They're like, yeah! Uh, you know, but it's not about God. It's about their favorite team or whatever, or the score or whatever. But but God's looking for high praise. Pray, I, I believe that's a quality praise, something that is coming. You know, you're worshiping God in spirit and in truth. And um, so we're going to be talking about the high praises of God, especially when it comes to spiritual warfare, because we are in a battle. We do have an enemy. And we are going to be encountering things. Now, a lot of times, it's behind the scenes. You don't really... You know, the devil's not running around with a pitchfork. He's not running around with, you know, the pointy horns and all, the nice red outfit or whatever. He, he is working behind the scenes. He is causing issues, causing situations in our lives. And we need to trust God. He, you know, the devil works through people. That's why the Bible says we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood, but against principalities and, and powers and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. And so the high praises of God are the warrior's weapon. That's the weapon that we use when we go into battle. It's the high praises of God. It brings the presence of God in the manifestations, and it destroys the works of darkness. That's what the, the high praises of God... See, where the Spirit of the Lord is... There's freedom. Things, people get set free. Pe habits are broken. Uh, oppression is broken. The, the enemy's plans get broken. When the enemy has a plan for you, start praising God. Let the high praises of God be in your heart Amen. and in your mouth. Amen? And, and it'll, it'll bring the presence. God just loves praise and worship. He loves it. It's, it's like an essence to them. It's a, like a perfume. You know, um, you, I know you girls when, you know, um, you put on your perfume and stuff, you want to smell real pretty. Because you know that it, it's, especially when you're young and you're dating or whatever, you want, you know that a guy likes a, a, a girl that smells. He doesn't want them to smell. <laughs> it smells good. Yeah, it smells good. There we go. Not, not smell, just smell. I stand corrected. Okay. Uh, 
A woman who, who smells good. Pretty. Pretty. Yeah, okay. And, uh, <laughs> we, we like stinky women around here. <laughs> but, um, but, but, uh, so, so, you know, but it, it's, you know, women do it because they want to smell pretty for, for the guy. Well, you know, our praise and worship, it's like an essence to God. It's like a perfume before the Lord. And when we praise and worship God, He loves it. It just, He, he just has to hang around that. You know, it's just, wow. It's His favorite set. Our worship, our love for Him. Amen. Amen. Amen? I, I like what it says here in Psalm 149, verse 5 through 9. It says, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. See, when we go to battle, you don't have to go out into the battlefield. You can win a victory right on your bed. Isn't that awesome? In your house, on your bed, while you're praying, the enemy's powers, his plans can be destroyed. It's pretty awesome. Oh yeah, I'm just laying back, just loving on God, and the enemy is being destroyed. Isn't that awesome? It says, let the high praises of God be in your mouth. And a two-edged sword in your hand. That's, that's battle. You're arrayed for battle. <laughs> When you're doing that. The Bible says, don't go into battle without the high praises of God. That's what we're talking about today. The high praises of God. It says, to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute on them the written judgment. What is written in the word of God. Speak the word. Worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen? Amen. It says, this honor have all his saints. All of his saints. There is not one of us who cannot do this. We all have this privilege. We all have this honor. We can go to battle wherever we're at. We can go to battle even at night when we're praying before we go to sleep. We can go to battle and say, Lord, I just love you. I'm, and, you know, just start loving on God and, and, and pray out whatever's going on. And watch God change things. Watch him turn things around. It's an awesome, awesome thing. See, in Nehemiah 8, verse 10, it says, Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. If you have joy, if you have God's joy, it's, it's not just joy, it's joy of the Lord. That is your strength. That's where you get the strength for battle. If, you, if you've been going through something, and you're feeling weary, and you're feeling tired, and you feel just frustrated, you need to get into the joy of the Lord. And it's going to come through worship, loving on Him. As you worship Him, that joy comes upon you. Because when God shows up, everything He is, is showing up. His peace, His joy, His comfort, His strength, His ability, His, his uh, provision, everything. You know, if you need God's uh, manifestation, manifested power in your life, praise and worship Him. Let the high praise of God. When you're in the, the, the midst of a battle, you need to have the high praises of God. It's the, This scripture in Psalm you know, 194, it talks about you know, of the high praises of God in your mouth, a two-edged sword in your hand. You are ready for battle. There was a... a missionary years ago. Uh, her name was Lillian Yeomans. She wrote the book, Healing from Heaven. Mm. Mightily used by the Lord. And uh, she, she shared a testimony about a woman who she was, this woman was a missionary and she was in China. And there was uh, an epidemic of smallpox that was just ravishing the whole er area. And she happened to come down with it. She had smallpox all over her, from the top of her head to the very soles of her feet. They had her quarantined, and they were just waiting for her to die because back then, there was no, no hope. There was no uh, way. That, in the medical field, they, they really didn't know how to deal with it. Smallpox. And, and she was just crying out to the Lord. Here she is in a foreign country, no medical help. Everyone's given up on her. They put her in a room by herself to die. And she's crying out to the Lord, and she's saying, Lord, you know, I need your help. Because 
There's no other one around here to help me. It's, I need you. And the Lord gave her a vision. And the vision that he gave her was he showed her two baskets. One of the baskets, it contained the trial and the, the problem. And the other basket contained praise and worship. And, and the, the one with the trial, it was full. It was overflowing full. But the one that, that uh, the other basket, it had praise in it. And that praise was only half full. And the Lord said, when your praise fills that basket up and, and it, it equals the, the trial, he said, you'll be cured. And so she started to praise and worship God. The people thought she was delirious. They're like, oh, she, you know, she's sick. She's, you know, got a high fever. She's feeling awful. She, she's quarantined. She's just delirious. She's singing out to God, you know, in desperation. And she, she just got loud and praised God and loved on God and, and, and just worshipped Him. The high praises of God were in her heart and in her mouth. And before long, she came out. She came walking out of the house with not, no blemishes or anything. She was completely cured of that. It's, it's called the praise cure. Amen? And we need, we need to be people of praise. Yes, people of prayer, but praise is prayer. Prayer is communicating with God. When you're praising God, you're communicating with Him. You're saying, God, I love you. God, I know you are more than enough. God, I know that whatever is coming against me, whether it be sickness, whether it be finances, whether it be whatever I'm dealing with, a betrayal, I know, God, you are bigger than this, and you are the one who is living on the inside of me. Greater is He who is in me than He who is in the world. Everywhere I go, you go, because you promised you'd never leave me nor forsake me. So I can boldly say, the Lord is my help. Amen. And I will not fear. What can man do to me? Amen. What can man do to me? Whatever you encounter, like go to God with the high praise. Be begin to praise Him for how big He is. And like we talked about last week, God will be magnified. Amen. Amen. You put God in the spotlight. And then your problems become they begin to be diminished before you. God, God's power begins to manifest and work in your life. It's, it's amazing. The enemy hates when we praise and worship God. He knows what can happen when that happens. He knows the danger. You know, the devil can work 20 years to put you in a bind. And, you know, 10 minutes of worshiping God, and it's all broken. Hallelujah. And it's like, wow. It's pretty awesome. Amen. See, when you're going into battle... We must be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. I like in Ephesians chapter 3, starting in verse 14 through 16, it says, For this reason I bow my knees to the Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that He would grant to you, according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with might through His Spirit in the inner man. His Spirit resides. When, if you're born again, His Spirit resides in your inner man. In your spirit man. Your spirit man is the holy of holies. That's, that's where God dwells. Well, God wants to invade your whole body. He wants to invade your whole life. As we praise and worship God, He, he flows not, not just uh, in the holy of holies, but He comes out. He fills the temple. And we'll be seeing that in just a bit. But, but we're supposed to be strong in the Lord in the power of His might. Well, it, His strength comes through the Spirit. We'll be strengthened with all might by His Spirit in our inner man. That Spirit that's on the inner man rises up and, and manifests and brings power. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in your mortal body, gives life to your mortal body. Greater is He who is in you than He is in the world. Man, I carry the, the King with me. Amen? Amen? The kingdom of God dwells on the inside. Why? Because the king resides there. We've got to be more God inside conscious. That's what worship does. Worship makes you more in God inside conscious. You just sense his presence. It's, it's incredible. In Ephesians chapter 6, see what I read to you right there about his spirit being the inner man, that's in Ephesians chapter 3. But in Ephesians chapter 6, it goes on and says, Finally, my brother, 
Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. This is a picture right before you're going into battle. You need to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. That's And how do you do, do that? By getting filled with the Spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. It says here that we are to put on the whole armor of God. That, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil or the, the plans of of the devil. Remember, we said that the God has, or the devil has plans for you. Well, God has plans for you too. Amen. Amen. And if you want to stand against the devil's plans, then you need to be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. It says here, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. You're not wrestling against that employee that's getting on your nerves. You're not wrestling against the you know, sickness or disease, you're wrestling against the cause of it, the enemy. And so we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. You may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. See, evil days will come. But the Bible tells us that when we're strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, we can withstand in that evil day. Amen. We can be strong in the Lord in the power of His Amen. might. And where does that, that strength come from? The joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. If you're lacking joy, then, then you need to get before God because you don't have strength. You need His strength. The enemy can, can get into your life and that's what the enemy... He want, if he can get rid of your joy, he can get rid of your strength. He'll, he'll win the battle. It's the joy of the Lord. And the joy comes from the presence of the Lord. That's one of the fruits of the Spirit. Joy. Amen. Hallelujah. It's good. Having done all to stand. If you want to stand, you're going to have to do something. You're going to have to get the high praises of God in your mouth. And that two-edged sword in your hand, that, that's the Word of God. The Word of God is living and powerful. It's a, it's a two-edged sword. I can remember uh, uh, a year and a half ago, that was actually a, f a few years ago now, when that demon-possessed girl came, Robert, remember that? And uh, she, she, her family brought her during our worship service, our Wednesday night worship service. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a long story, but... The, the girl just started manifesting. She's trying to bite us. She's saying all kinds of foul things and spitting on us. I mean, you had to wear a rain jacket that day. It was pretty <laughs> clean. And, uh, you know, she's in our church. Because at first we had her outside, and she, she got on the ground, and a car pulled up. And they're, they're like, hey, is everything all right? Oh, like, yeah, yeah, we're just praying for her. Meanwhile, there's her parents, and we're, we're all on top of her, you know. We're like, they're going to call them. I mean, and the parents, they didn't even ask me. They just, they picked their daughter up and they carried her to the church. I'm like, okay, well, we're having Wednesday night service here. So, um, you know, our Wednesday night service became a deliverance service. We, we uh, basically, there was no Wednesday night regular Bible study. And uh, so Robert and I, we're ministering to, to her, and we're speaking the word, and we're using the name of Jesus. We're praying for her. And, and I began to... to to just sing a song, and I, I'm not a great singer. You know, I sing solo. You know, solo. solo you can't hear me. But I wasn't solo that night though. And so I started to sing about Jesus. I said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I probably scared him with just my my voice, but um, but you know, there's just something about that name, Master, Amen. Savior. Amen. Amen. Jesus. He's like the fragrance after the rain. Amen. Amen? And so I was just singing that song because I did all the rebuking I knew to do. I used the name of Jesus. I did, and then all of a sudden it came into my heart. Start singing. singing. Start worshiping God. And, and the power of God began to manifest and the, the little girl was delivered. Amen. Robert and I, and, and there was a few others in the background who were doing some prayer warrioring themselves. And, uh, you know, and the girl walked out and she was completely set free. Amen. And it was, 
There was battle going on. And we had to put some high praise to the Lord. Some worship in our hearts and in our mouths. And the victory was won. Amen? Amen. Don't go into battle without those high praises of God. Don't go into battle without speaking to God. Talking about the big, boasting on God's bigness. How big He is. Man, my God. It, he, he owns the... He doesn't only, only own the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns all the gold and silver on it. He owns the whole world. <laughs> Amen? Amen. He's, he created it all. Amen. There's nothing too difficult for God. Amen. Amen? When you're going to battle, you need to be bragging on God. Just like we talked about last week with, with David. He said, the same God who delivered me from the lion and the bear is going to deliver me from you, you uncircumcised Philistine. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Amen. I got covenant with him. Amen. How dare you defy the armies of the living God? Amen. Well, you're, if you're born again, I'm here to tell you that you have enlisted in the army of God. You're part of the army of God. Amen. You have all the authority that you need to set people free. You have the name of Jesus. You have the spirit of the living God dwelling on the inside. You have the authority that, that God gave you as a believer, as you speak forth, and as you begin to speak forth with the high praise of God on your lips, that brings the power or presence of God on the scene. It's, it's an awesome thing. I like when, you know, when, when, when praise fills our mouths, God's Spirit fills the temple. You are that temple. The Bible says we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Bible tells us that we as the temple need to be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Ephesians 5. Isn't Ephesians rich? I've already touched on two other scriptures from Ephesians. Ephesians, I just love that book. I mean, I love all the Word of God, but something about Ephesians is just so mm, powerful. Uh, it, it says in Ephesians 5, starting in verse 15, and we'll read down through 20, it says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time, because why? The days are evil. We just read that you want to withstand in what? In the evil day. Amen? Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not be drunk with wine, which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. The Bible says if you want to be wise, you need to be filled with the Spirit on that evil day. That's what it's saying. God's will is that you're filled with the Spirit. When the enemy comes in, you are filled with the Spirit. You're filled with the power of God. Filled with the presence of God. It says here, how do you get filled with the Spirit? In verse 19 it says, Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of, the Lord Je of our Lord Jesus Christ. Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. As you worship God, as you get that high praise of God, the Spirit, the, the temple of God gets filled with the Spirit. Amen? The joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. 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 You walk with joy. You walk with power. When you're in battle, you go in there with joy. If you don't have joy going into the battle, then you need to get away with God and find Him. Spend time with Him. And leave with joy because you'll have the strength to overcome. Hallelujah. God is good. I like what it says here in 2 Chronicles 5. 13 and 14. This is talking about the temple of God in the Old Testament. It says, in, Indeed it came to pass, when the trumpeters and the singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard, praising and thanking the Lord. And when they had filled up their voice, or when they had lifted up their voice, with trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music, and praised the Lord, saying, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. That the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud. So that the priest could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. The glory of the Lord filled 
the house of God. And when did it fill the house of God? When they lifted up their voice, when they gave worship to God, when that when the, they, I mean the instruments and the the, the voices that they're singing, they're praising God. And the Bible tells us that the, the temple of God was filled with the glory of God. That's that's an old testament picture of the New Testament. You are the temple of God. And as you praise and worship God, you get filled with His glory. He just shows up. He inhabits the very praises of His people. You want His presence? Give Him the praise. Amen? Amen. 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 He's, he's awesome. It's win-win. You know, God's blessed, we're blessed, everyone's blessed. I mean, how can you go wrong with that? It's at Chronicles chapter 20. Starting in verse uh, 1. This is talking about where Jehoshaphat was in a battle. And the battle was, I mean, he had everyone coming out against him. I mean, he was outnumbered, way outnumbered. There was no way that there was any hope of him being successful, of him winning this battle. This battle was, I mean, he was surrounded. He was in the process of really going to be wiped out. I mean, there, there was just, in the natural, there is no hope. I mean, overwhelming. You know, and that they teach in, in, in the military that you have to go in, you go in with, a, you know, power, with overwhelming power to overcome an enemy, break their, their, their you know, their power, their, their, their will to fight even. I mean, so it happened. He's, he's out there and he's looking, he's like, man, you know, look at this. There's, there's a vast army, not just from one country, but many countries. I'm in trouble. Mm -hmm. It happened after this that the people of Moab, with the people of Ammon, and others with them besides the Amorites, came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against us from beyond the sea from Syria, and they are in Hazazon Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat, at first, he feared. He's, he's looking at it with his natural eyes. He's like, well, this is an, an impossible battle to win. We don't have enough spears. We don't have enough arrows. I mean, we're going to run out. This battle is an impossibility. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. When, when you're facing a, a situation where it just looks impossible, there is just like no hope, you need to be seeking the Lord. Because your hope comes from Him. Yeah. Your hope is from Him. Yes. You know, having Him is all you need to succeed. It says, and proclaim, it says they proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord. That's the temple of God. Thank God. You know, we take the temple everywhere we go. No matter where you go, you have the temple with you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So he went to the house of God before the, the new court and said, O oh Lord, God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? What's it, what he's doing is he is magnifying. Remember we talked about magnifying the Lord last week? He's magnifying God. He's, he's, beginning to, he's saying, God, this is who you are. It says, and you do not, and, and, and do you not rule over all the kingdoms and nations? And in your hand is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you? God, if you're on our side, you know, we got it. But uh, are you not our God? You're, you're not the God of the Amorites. You're not the God of, of all these other countries. You're our God. This is talking about this is personal here. These armies are coming against me, and you are my God. Amen. The God who is more than enough. Amen. The God 
who can do all things. With God, all things are possible. And, and the Bible also says with, um, that all things are possible to those who believe. Believe God. Trust Him. Because it's not going to work out for this king if he doesn't put his faith in God in this situation. There's no hope. God is his only hope. So it's, he says, so that no one is able to withstand you. Are you not our God? who drove out the inhabitants of the land before your people, Israel, and gave it to your descendants, to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever. And they dwell in it and have built you, and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying if disaster comes upon us, sword or judgment, pestilence or famine, we will stand before this temple and in your presence. For your name is in this temple. And cry out to you in our affliction. If you're going through affliction, cry out to God. Because he's the answer. If the enemy's coming out and it just looks impossible. And, and you're outnumbered. And it just looks like you're going to sink. I'm telling you, look to God. God is your answer. God will take care of you. He will see you through. No matter what you will ever encounter in life, God is the one who can take care of you. Amen. He says, and you will, here's the face speaking. You know, first he says, to cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear and save. Amen. That's faith talking there. And now, See, he just, what he did, he just exalted God. He just magnified God. He just said, and you're my God. The awesome God you are, you are El Shaddai. You are the one who is more than enough. You are Jehovah Jireh. You're my provider. You're Jehovah Nisi. You're my peace. You're, you're everything that the word of God says you are, and you're my God. And you're with me. And you're going to help me through this. Amen. You hear me when I cry out. And, and you come and you deliver. You save. Hallelujah. Amen. And so he goes on in verse 10. He says, and now here are the people of Ammon. See, he just exalted God. Now he's saying, and here's the problem right here. This is the problem. Don't take the problem to God right away. Exalt him. Put the high praises of God in your mouth. Exalt him. Magnify him. And then when you bring the problem to him, see, God, you can handle this. This is no big deal. <laughs> Even though it's a, a vast army that has many spears and, and arrows and weapons beyond what we could ever encounter. But you know what? You know, you can handle it because you're so awesome, God. Amen? Yeah. You split the Red Sea. You, you're the one who brought victory to us. And now, here are the people... Here are the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt. But they are turned, but they turned from them and did not destroy them. Here they are, rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. God, this is getting personal. You know, an attack on me is a personal attack on God. Amen. He's my God. When the enemy's attacking me, he's attacking God. Amen. Amen. If he's attacking you, he's attacking God. Amen? Because he's your God. He belongs to you. Amen? He's my God. I carry him everywhere I go. He lives on the inside of me. Greater is he in me than he's in the world. I got victory. Where I walk, God walks. Amen? Because he lives in me. Hallelujah. The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in me. He lives in you. Amen. And he'll give you the victory to get through it. Yes. Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power. See, they recognize their, their inefficiency. They said, we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. Nor do we know what to do. But our eyes are on you. Amen. Now, all Judah with their little ones, their wives, and their children stood before the Lord. They just brought everyone in. Let's bring in our little, you know, five-year-old, our little infants. We're, God, 
Well, we're just standing before you. Because this army is coming to wipe us out, and we're your people. And you're our God. What are you going to do about it? Isn't that? Isn't that awesome? It, it's time to stand before the Lord. When, when, when you're encountering something, stand before the Lord. In, in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, continuing on through verse 15, it says, And he said, Listen, all you of Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you King, of Je and you, and you King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, Do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours. Mm. Hallelujah. But it's God's. Tomorrow, go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jer Jer Jeruel. You will not need to fight this battle. Position yourself. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. O oh, Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. Amen. Hallelujah. The answer is with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord. And it says here, worshiping him. That they weren't they weren't going, oh poor us, man. But God, you didn't see that. You, you, didn't, you just obviously you didn't see this multitude that's coming out against us. We saw their, their we saw their shields and we saw their spears and their arrows. They were glimmering in the sunlight. They didn't do that. They worshipped the Lord. Amen. 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 Then the Levites of the children of the Kohathites. And the children of the Korahites and all those other ites stood up to praise the Lord of Israel with voices loud and high. They, they had voices. These were the high praises of God. They, they were going to battle and they were using the high praises of God. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you his inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe the Lord your God, and you will be established. Believe his prophets, and you will prosper. In other words, believe God's word. Because that's, that's what the prophets would speak was his word. Believe the word of God. And, and he had... And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of his holiness. And as they went out before the army, they were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Mm -hmm. Now when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushments against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir who had come against Judah. And they were defeated. And so the Bible tells us that they went and they didn't even have to throw a spear. They didn't have to launch an arrow. Nothing. They were just worshiping God. The high praises of God were in their mouths. And, and the, the enemy, they turned on each other. And, and as they turned on each other, they wiped each other out. They, Israel, the, those Judah and, and those who were with them, they went in there and they were just, you know, they're just plucking the rings and the gold and the camels and the tents. It's all theirs. It took them three days to get all the plunder from the enemy. And they didn't have to do anything but have the high praise of God in their mouth. That's what they did. Amen. Amen. I'm here to tell you today, when you're encountering the enemy, when you're preparing for battle, you must have God's strength, His might. And it comes through the joy of the Lord. It comes through the high praises of God. You can't have the high praises of God in your mouth and be, be depressed in your heart. It doesn't work that way. When you've got the high praises of God, it, you're pumped up, man. You know, I'm, I'm yours and you're mine, God. Amen? You, you are the answer to every situation and circumstance. Isn't that awesome? And, and so, so it took them three days to gather all that up. 
In Isaiah 59, verse 19, it says, So they shall fear the name of the Lord from the West. Amen? God gave us His, his name. Fear the name of the Lord from the West and His glory from the rising of the sun. That, that word glory, that's the presence of God. That's the Holy Spirit. The temple was filled with what? The glory. Amen? The glory of God. It says here, and His glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against them. It's the Spirit of the Lord. Get full of praise and worship. Let the high praises of God be on your lips and let yourself get filled with God. Full of God. Amen? The devil doesn't want you to be full of God because you, you'll be a mess to him. You'll mess him up. And, and, you know, I just love this. You know, praise, praising God brings His presence, His power, and His provision. And I would even go one more and say, and His protection. Amen? Amen. And the last scripture I'm going to leave with you, and this scripture just, this is so powerful. It's all about praise. Amen? Praise the Lord. It's, it's in Psalm 150. It says, praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him for his mighty in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and the dance. Praise him with strong instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise Him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Just want to encourage you that whatever you will ever encounter in this life, it may look impossible. The doctors may give you the worst report. The, the bank may, may give you the negative report. People may be negative all around you. But get along with God and let the high praises of God be in your mouth. Let that two-edged sword be in your hand. And God will back you up. God will rise up big on the inside of you. If you're encountering the enemy, go in there with boldness and say, The Lord is my helper. Why? Because he won't, he'll never leave me nor forsake me. He's there with me everywhere I go. The Lord is the one. He's the strength of my life. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. I am what the Bible says I am. I can do what the Bible says I can do. I've been anointed with God. The devil, when he comes to me, the, the Bible tells me that, that I can crush Satan under my feet. Amen? Amen? The God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. Amen? Amen? Amen. It's all about God. Amen? Let's, let's exalt him. Let's, let's make Him who He really is. Amen. Magnify Him. He's the everything. Amen. Amen? Any problem you ever have will be very insignificant when you begin to magnify God. Amen. And magnify Him and your faith will begin to rise up. Your boldness will begin to rise up and the enemy will begin to tremble. He'll be like, uh-oh, look out. You know, here comes Renee. He's got the high praises of God on his lips, man. Amen? Look out. Amen? Lydia, got the high praises of God on her lips, man. Look out. And the enemy, you know, she gets that, that, you know, mother bear kind of thing, right? Amen. You know, take your hands off of my kids. Amen? Amen. And then just start loving on God. Praise Him. You're bigger than the situation and circumstance. Amen? Whatever you're dealing with, God has the answer. And as we worship and praise Him, we go in with the weapon of high praises. Things will turn around for us. Amen. Yes. Amen. Let's pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for each person here today. I thank you, Lord, that you are the answer. Lord, whatever we will ever encounter, we can trust you. We know that you are more than enough for the circumstance. Lord, we know that whatever the enemy comes in, your spirit will raise up a standard against him. You will take care of us. Even when the enemy thinks that he won, we can overcome because you're with us. Amen. You're, you're the God who even raises the dead. Amen. Hallelujah. You're the one who gives life to the dry bones. Yes. 
You can resurrect our dreams. You can resurrect our hopes. You can resurrect our, our lives, Lord. When the enemy thinks that he's destroyed us, you rise up on the inside of us. You give us victory. And you help us to overcome whatever he throws at us. And we have more than enough to succeed. So Lord, I thank you for giving a revelation of this to each one of us, Lord. This week we will spend time putting the high praises of God in our lips. Amen. Give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Is there anyone here who needs prayer for anything?